and you know, shout them out. Um, so I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not your average home inspector. Um, I'm previously, and I don't mean that in terms of just self promotion. I'm uh, previously a, a real estate broker in North Carolina. I have my own brokerage. Uh, I also had a real estate investing business. I didn't practice there, and uh, I, I got licensed down in North Carolina. I opened a, a brokerage here. Um, so I understand what real estate investors are looking for. I know that you're not a retail client. That you're you have you know way different needs and a different perspective than than your than your retail clients. Um, I will just self promote a little bit. Um, all of uh, our uh, appointments can be booked online through SilkInspections.com. I'm going to reference that later on for some resources. So if you're looking for uh, some resources to tie in, you can go to SilkInspections.com. Um, all the reports are electronic, uh, typically involve uh, pictures, videos, um, and, and the language is, is simplified. It's, it's not, I try to stay away from uh, industry speak, and it, it's something that anyone can understand whether or not you have uh, a background in building sciences or construction. So uh, that, that's it for my gratuitous self-plug. Um, I do offer a 10% military and veteran discount, educator discount, behavior health professional, and uh, first responder discount. So uh, all 3,000 square feet is $400. With the 10% discount, it's $360. That's all inclusive of taxes. There's no additional fees. And you know, I'll, I'll go as far as uh, Moore County, um, Lee County, you know, surrounding areas around around Fayetteville, and there's no additional trip charges or anything like that. Um, in terms of the uh, multifamily properties, they're, they're, I think they're real competitive. Um, some of the people here have actually used me before. Duplexes are 550. Uh, your triplexes are uh, 575. All just flat feet, so it doesn't. A lot of inspectors will charge based on the age of the property. Uh, I, I separate it out by size, so if it's 3,000 and under, it's one price. If it's 3,000 and over, it's another. I haven't really run into anything over. Actually, I did have one that was 7,000 square feet, but generally doesn't come up all that often. Um, so, uh, has anyone used, um, I know like some of the people down here, used a home inspector for an investment property to purchase? Pre previously, just raise your hand. Okay, so. I have two goals with this presentation. One is to convince you, if you're not doing it, to use. Uh, can everyone hear me? Or you want me to use the mic? Yeah. Hello, is that better? Yeah. I hate when my voice is projected through <laughs> a mic. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> it works for me. Uh, so, uh, so my, my first goal is to convince you to use a home inspector if you haven't used a home inspector for, um, for investment purposes. If you uh, don't want to follow my advice and use a home inspector is to give you some tips, some uh, just kind of briefly some things that you can look at when you're out in the property uh, to kind of uh, ward off uh, unexpected costs and things that you may you know, run into that you really don't uh, want to do that. Sorry. I'm, so what inspectors do is we perform visual, uh, non-invasive inspections of major systems and, and components of the home. So um, it's right there in the name, you inspect the home. We're not you know, looking at things like that come up in the course of a home inspection, I'll let you know, clients know, but they're generally, uh, they're not included unless it in some way materially impacts uh, that home. And we describe the defects in these major systems and components uh, in, 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 a, uh, in a point of time, which, which means you know, we can't predict the future, so we don't necessarily know, you know what's going to come of that problem or if there are hidden problems, we're, we're not able to, to, uh, to obviously describe those. We do indications of those defects, so um, you know, if there's a leak, we'll tell you that a leak may cause you know, uh, mold growth, or not that I use the word mold, but um, it will uh, potentially cause you know other problems, and we'll kind of list those out. Uh, and then we refer to uh, uh, further evaluations by specialists. So home inspectors are generalists, right? We have uh, broad knowledge of a number of different systems and components, but one we're prohibited from doing anything invasive to to do anything like 
you know, pulling panels off of things and taking things apart. Um, uh, so our, when we refer to our specialists, they generally can get away with doing some things like that. Like your HVAC specialist can hide, you know, hook up some diagnostic equipment to an HVAC um, system and, and uh, be able to tell a little bit you know, further what may be uh, the issue with it. So I kind of uh, made uh, what we're looking at, HVAC, built-in kitchen appliances, electrical, exterior and interior systems, uh, insulation and ventilation, plumbing, roofing, uh, and structural components. It's really like the, the big items that you know, as, a, as an investor, you don't want to run into down the road and, and, and realize there's, a, there's an issue with this thing that's going to cost, you know, uh, thousands of dollars more than, than what your anticipate, anticipated uh, expenses were for that, for that home. Uh, and I know this, I didn't realize there's going to be <laughs> some more of like what those systems and components are, but essentially all that you need to know is from the top of the house to the bottom of the house, we're, we're looking at all the system and components that are, that are visible in that house. Uh, when we inspect. Um, the bottom line of it all is that uh, essentially I get paid to walk around in attics and crawl around in crawl spaces and I, I told Kyle I was going to do this to him. Kyle and T, I don't know where T went, but oh there he is, uh, with home front contractors. I see them out uh, everywhere. I'm glad they showed up because I'm going to reference them a little later on, but if you take a look at Kyle I understand why. An attic, so um, and it's you know generally true. I'm just picking on on him, but it's generally true of contractors that, that they they don't do that kind of work. Um, they're they're more on the side of when a, a problem has been identified. That's when they're coming in and, and providing those uh, cost est estimates for for repairs. And I, I touched a little bit about on you know like what we can do in terms of being able to tell you know what's going to happen in the future with things. Um, but some of the limitations are that we can't inspect every system every time. One of, and a good example is that, of that is like uh, the HVAC system. We can't run the cooling uh, side of the HVAC in the winter time because most manufacturers um, tell you that you, you shouldn't do that when it's under you know, 65 degrees. Um, again, we can't describe what the future holds with, with the property. So you know we may see like a you know little evidence of a leak. Somebody may come in and, and fix that leak, but there may be something else going on there, and, and there could have been some other damage that was hidden behind some insulation or something like that. We we're not able to really tell uh, what the what the future holds with, with those kinds of things. Um, one of the key things, and I know there there are some home inspectors. I I don't advise anyone on what whether or not to buy a home. Um, I get that question a lot, you know, oftentimes it's like people want to nudge in, in one direction or the other, and that's not my lane. My, I, I pride myself on being just the facts inspector. I'm going to give you what I, you know, I'm able to observe of the conditions of the home at, at that point in time, and, and then it's in your hands whether to decide, because there's so many factors that go into, you know, purchasing real estate, and I don't know, you know, your financial background, I don't know your, your risk tolerance, so I stay out of it, um, and I don't provide cost ed estimates. I refer you to Kyle and T if you want a cost estimate. I see those guys uh, out everywhere, and they can they can help you with those uh, those kinds of cost estimates. Um, and another uh, avenue for understanding costs is some uh, resources that are out on, on the internet. These are actually in uh, my report, um, so if you use me, you'll be able to easily click from there to kind of figure out just generally speaking. Um, how much you know a, a defect might uh, might cost, um, and I'm going to cite some of these uh, in, in the presentation so you can see what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, so, home inspection has benefits on both the buying and the selling side. Uh, obviously, we're going to hopefully identify you know any potential costly items that um, may come back to bite you later on uh, if, if we don't. We're, we're a second set of eyeballs, so you may have that friend who's you know a contractor. You may know a guy who you know does construction and bring them in to kind of take a look at things. But um, we're going to have a second set of eyeballs to help you uh, identify some problems. Um, I know some of the investors that I work with, they use the report as a punch list for items, so they can like hand that to a contractor, or if they're doing the work themselves, they can kind of just go down that list and check off items as they as they go along. Um, and, and you save time with on, on, on the buy side, right? And you know, talk about 
this later, but you know you want to get those that due diligence uh, out of the way when you when you enter in a contract. You want to get that home inspection scheduled, and then anything that comes up out of that home inspection, you want to get those specialists in there. And because it, for every moment that you're spending on a home that you're not going to buy, um, you're lo you're potentially losing opportunities with other homes that may be more profitable for you. Uh, and, and it certainly puts you in a better position to negotiate. You know, if you're if you're walking in and you're saying, well, there's, you know, I see that there's X, Y, and Z with this property. Um, you're you're a self-interested party in that transaction, right? Well, if you're having a licensed third party uh, come in and, and take a look at it, providing you with an official report, that's something that you can use to hopefully knock some some. Um, and I know I, th this this side of the column here on the selling side, it, it, it's probably going to fall on deaf ears. Um, but you know the market's great right now, and I've been through markets that weren't so great. And one of the ways that you can distinguish yourself is to have a home inspection on the sell side, because there are going to be a lot of homes that are available on the market when the market turns, and inevitably it will, and it'll 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 be you know more difficult to sell a home. Um, it's just the way you know it goes. Um, but one of the ways that you can distinguish yourself with that is to have that home inspection report in hand. And there is, you know, a stigma involved, especially with flipped homes. Are there, are there people that flip here? Yeah. So I'll tell you when when I know, and, and it's it's fairly obvious when you know what you're looking at that you're walking into a home that's a flipped home. And many of that, many of the indicators of that, you know, there's there's so many books that have been written and videos on it, and you know, different television series and. You're, you're putting in like, I don't know, that ethanol, you know, fireplace, you're doing that, you know, engineered vinyl plank floor, and maybe you took out a wall and making an open floor plan. Like, when I walk into a property like that, I know it's a flipped home, and I'm gonna scrutinize it more heavily just because I know that not everyone is, you know, the most uh, uh, ethical flipper, and they may try to cut corners or hide things, and, and I'm trying to do the best for my clients, so I wanna find it. There are any things that are kind of hidden, um, you know, with that. So, by having that home inspection report, it helps you to overcome that that stigma, um, and and it goes towards building that buyer confidence. So, if somebody comes, uh, you know, agent, they know, you know, this is a this is a flipped home, um, and you're greeting them with a home inspection report, and then you have permits or documentation showing that you've made repair, repairs on this home. It just builds. Uh, you know that buyer's confidence, and, and that goes a long way to help to sell that home because it, it's all about perception. Um, I had a eighth grade uh, debate teacher that told me that perception is reality, and it's stuck with me. You know, since then, um, that that's what drive people aren't looking at it analytically; they're looking at it like, or they're, they're they're experiencing it, they're feeling it, and if you can if you can build that confidence for them, you're going a lot further towards you know closing that deal. Um, Another, another benefit is that if you have that report, you can help meet the, the state uh, disclosure uh, requirements for those for those systems where you can hand that off to somebody um, without having to you know do your yes no no representation kind of thing um, with it. And of course, you know there it also puts you in a, a better position to negotiate because if somebody else comes in and says, well, there's X, Y, and Z wrong with this property, you can show, look, I had a these repairs done, it just puts you in a lot better position to kind of push back against that uh, inevitable, you know, push to, to lower your, your, your price or to, to fix some things. You know, the, the downside to that, I think, you know, and, and honestly, when I was a real estate investor, I did not uh, use a home inspector. And knowing now, uh, knowing what I know now, um, you know, hindsight being 2020, I would highly, highly recommend, and I'm going to give an example of, of why you really should have a, uh, a home inspector, uh, everything. But um, I use a systematic process to inspect homes. Um, so I'm gonna talk about it from like a broad standpoint, but um, like to give you an example, when I go into a bathroom, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run the sink, I'm gonna fill it up to the secondary drain line. I wanna make sure, especially where you have those, those sinks that are uh, one piece with a vanity, because if there's a crack under there and I'm running that water through and, and it's and it starts to leak, the whole vanity has to be replaced typically. You know, if if it, if it can't be sealed, and that's you know, it's an expensive item. 
I'll, I'll fill the bath, I'll run the shower, I'll flush the toilet like three times. And the reason why I do all that is because I really want to put some strain on that plumbing system. Because the last stop in my day is going up under that crawl space where, you know, that's where I make my big bucks. And I'm, I want to see, is there anything leaking? You know, and, and that's, really good. that's really where you're going to see like those high dollar items come from. If, if you have a leak and, and there's a sub subfloor that needs to be ripped out. So um, that's, that's what I mean when I, when I say I have a systematic process to, to uh, inspecting homes. And I do it the same way every time. Um, so I, I know I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch some things. Um, kind of from the broad, and I know this is like real hard to see, but um, I, I purposely titled this slide Home Pitfalls by Decade because you can find this on my website, selfinspections.com forward slash home dash pitfalls uh, dash by dash decade. Um, and what this chart is, is it lists out from, from you know, uh, the top here from pre-1950s homes to modern homes and then all the potential defects. And these uh, to a place where you're gonna walk in a home and, and know, okay, if I'm looking at a 1950s home, I may be looking at asbestos vinyl tile, asbestos insulation, asbestos popcorn ceilings, asbestos shingles. Uh, I, I may have some, some problems with, a, with service panels or low slope roofs that might leak or fuse boxes, galvanized steel pipes, things like that, real costly items that um, may, may come back to bite you. Um, and just as a note, uh, your, your older homes have the potential to have every successive issue that has come old and, and uh, somebody told me a story recently where they, where they had a, an issue with plumbing and um, the gentleman went in and he replaced all his plumbing and I believe it was with polybutylene uh, pipe which is a, considered to be a defective material and he had originally tried to sell the home and he had the problem with the plumbing so he put the polybutylene in and then that became known as a defective and he's like I'm never going to sell this home like I'm trying to get rid of this thing. Um, so, so older homes can see every successive issue that, that the, the, um, the more current generations have because of renovations and additions and things like that. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, all right, so this is why you need a home inspection. Um, and, and I would just add to that that you need not only a home inspection, but you need an investor-friendly home inspector. Um, that, that understands your perspectives uh, and your needs. So, I don't know, can, can everybody see that? So that's an electric service panel, and uh, does anybody inspections hat for anybody who can tell me what's wrong with that? Not, not you, <laughs> not Kyle, but um, can anyone tell me what's wrong with that, that panel? What's that? It's not labeled. No? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Does that help at all? all right, I'll give you a hint. It says up up here. It says stat lock. Is anyone familiar with that? What's that? Yeah, uh, there you go. So give the man a hat. <laughs> So, so Federal Pacific stat block uh, service panels in their day, which was like from 1950s and 1980s, were considered like, you know, the, the bomb, right? They were like the new upcoming, you know, service panels. Um, they, they had some features to them. The problem is that they weren't uh, UL certified, so that Underwriters Laboratory certified panels, which today is required for any kind of electronic components that go into happen. And the problem with it is the way that these breakers sit on the on the bus bar. Um, sometimes they they slip or they uh, scorch behind there. And as a home inspector, if I come in and see this, and I know a lot of a lot of uh, home inspectors, they actually will not remove the cover from this panel because it is considered a defective panel. And if they remove it, they could you know basically own it, and there could be some issues. I've heard from some home inspectors that they've. They have slipped, the breakers have slipped, and they've had problems getting them back on there. You can't buy breakers anymore for this. They don't make them any longer. So if something goes bad, you know, 
say goodbye to your HVAC or say goodbye to whatever is sitting on that because you no longer have the ability to, uh, to replace that. But one of the other kind of main issues with this is that uh, they, the breakers were not tripping all the time. So you would have an overcurrent uh, condition and the breaker wouldn't trip. So yeah, you can see how that might be problematic. That's uh, you know potential electrocution where you don't have a breaker that's that's tripping when it when that circuit's being overloaded. Um, and the reason why I, I wanted to include this is because I've seen this numerous times in flipped homes where I've gone in, and it's like to the point now where I know when I walk in there and I see the things that I mentioned before in terms of a flipped home, I go right to the panel and I and I look to see does it have a Federal Pacific stat block service panel because often, yes sir? I was just going to ask, what years were they generally? Uh, 50s to the 80s, and they were installed in millions of homes. Um, so, uh, I, I have seen this, and, and what has essentially happened is it has killed the deal. The client has walked away from it because they, they saw this. And when I, when I tell you I'm a just the facts kind of guy, I'm not an alarmist, you, know, you use the, the word fire, I don't include that, and I'll show you. Um, this is actually my report comment that I put in there, and it reads, the electric system of this home contains a Federal Pacific electric stat lock service panel. The reliability and safety of this panel has been in question due to documented circuit breaker and bus bar failures, proper identification of latent defects or evidence of hazardous conditions related to the system requires the removal of the circuit breakers and is beyond the scope of the home inspection. A licensed electrical contractor should be consulted for a complete invasive inspection of the electrical panel to determine if repair, modification, or replacement is needed to ensure safe and reliable service. So, sounds good, right? It's not my language, it actually comes right from the North Carolina Home Inspection Licensure Board. Um, that's why I use it. Uh, there's nothing in there about, about fires, it's just potentially hazardous. Um, so if you're a client and you see this comment, you might say, well, that it's still a little I googled this, and the first search result that came up was uh, uh, societyinsurance.com. And the third paragraph in, on that page read, in part, that these panels may be responsible for as many as 2,800 fires, 13 deaths, and 40 million in property damage every year. That even if the circuit is in the off position, they have been known to still power the circuit, causing an electrocution hazard. So you can see why a client, you know, maybe doing a little extra and doing a search on this may walk from this property. And so, you know, when I, when I see something like this, um, I know that, you know, I've earned my fee by, by pointing this out because I potentially have saved, you know, someone from a hazardous condition. Whether or not they walk from that or not, I think I've earned my fee with that. And honestly, I would rather earn the fee from you on the front side than to have a client on the back side go in after you've done all that work and, and uh, you're now faced with uh, a material defect that now has been disclosed to you that you now have to disclose that, you know, if somebody else purchases that property um, and or you need to replace it and earn a fee to dissipate. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say too, so the, the retail cost of uh, replacing something like this is about fifteen hundred to three thousand um, dollars, and and I put that maybe maybe you can help me with this with uh, your monthly holding costs. I'm figuring that's about one or two months of, in holding costs, uh, like if you're doing a hard money uh, kind of loan thing, right? Am I am I close with that? Or yeah. So if if so, if my, if my thinking is that if I come in by this and you replace it out and. You're not going to necessarily pay a fifteen hundred or three thousand dollar. You know, you're a real estate investor, so you're savvy and you know that it's your home. You can go in and, and take care of that full permit and do it the right way. But you're not going to pay that that money. But for a retail client coming in looking at buying that home, they're going to potentially have to pay three thousand dollars to have that thing replaced. So if they decide to walk from that. Your holding costs for a month or two are roughly equivalent to what it could have cost you just to replace that thing out in the first place, right? Am I, is that kind of yeah. sound logic? I just came up with that. No, I'm doing this. <laughs> um, so you know, put another way, had you hired hired me on the front end, you know, you pay my four hundred dollar fee or my you know three hundred and sixty dollar fee with a ten percent you know veteran military discount. Did I mention that? Um, 
you you and, and you replace the panel and you did it at the on a real estate investor you know basis and not the retail cost, you would have came out far ahead. And 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 the other thing you know is you have that those missed opportunities because if you're still holding on to this thing, you, you have to remarket it and you know tend, you know, you've got to put it back on the market and you know you're just gonna incur additional costs on top of that that could have been avoided. You know, fairly easy. I walk into a house and I see this, and I will say, just like as a tip, if you walk into a home and, and you don't need to know anything about uh, what kind of panels are there, you don't have to do any kind of research, but if you see multicolored breakers in a box, generally speaking, that's, so that's like red and blue colored breakers, generally speaking, you're looking at a box that has some potential defects sitting there. So there, there's, a, there's a free tip. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Of, uh, of using a home inspector and you want to do your own inspection, um, I'm calling this the RSTLNE uh, method. So does anybody know what that refers to, the RSTLNE? Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune, yeah. I'm, I'm more of a Jeopardy guy, but it's a good, it's a good way to illustrate the point. Um, there are certain things that as a real estate investor you should just be aware of, right? So I'm going to make an acronym out of this. So your, your R and your S is your roofing and your siding, your T's are your bathrooms and your kitchens. Right? Your L is your latent defects. Your N is your new set of those rules, right? So, and probably, you, know, you, you probably understand that what's going to help you sell homes is those roofing, siding, windows, things like that. Um, your, your kitchens and your bathrooms, that if you're looking to flip a home, those are the things that you know, are going to help move that, that property. Um, the, the new systems and components, those are the things that, like the polybutylene plumbing that I mentioned before, um, are, are the, the latest and greatest things, the federal stat lock, uh, you know, panels, the latest and greatest things that become the future defects. Um, so you, you need to be aware that it makes sense if you're looking at like the newfangled product that's out there that does something along those major system lines that maybe you pay a little bit more and go with the old proven technology and wait a little bit before, you know, putting in that newfangled, uh, you know, plumbing material that may wind up becoming defective. Um, so hopefully you all have an understanding of like what moves homes in terms of like those major items. And those, you know, um, everyone can look at a roof uh, and, and look at windows and, and look at kind of these major items and, and, and have it, you know, check the money is, you know, I go up in the attic and I look at the back underside of that roof and that's truly how you inspect a roof. A lot of people think you walk on a roof. Um, yes, you can find some defects that way, but it doesn't matter if there's hay on a roof as long as it's shedding water that's the whole point so you find whether or not it is doing what it's supposed to do by looking up underneath it um, so there's a, another tip for you if you're inclined to go climb in, in, in an attic um, so I talked about uh, you, know, you really want to know um, especially like you, I, I keep mentioning polybutylene plumbing I see that everywhere uh, in, in Fayetteville. There are so many homes. Um, I think it was from 78 to 96 that homes were built using polybutylene. And I generally don't see like active defects with that, but when you're talking about having to redo, you know, potentially all of your, you know, plumbing, um, in term, at least in terms of the water distribution lines, you know, you may be looking at like a $3,000 item. So it's good to know that um, you should be able to to, to pick some of those items out just so that you know you're not running into major costs down the road. Um, so I wanted to talk about some just kind of quickly some overlooked effects. Uh, and and these so the, the first two of your gutters and your negative grading are items that um, are generally low cost items to, to add. It's not so much that those are the items that I want you to focus on. I want you to think of the implications of a home that doesn't have gutters on it and doesn't have a, a, a grade away from the home so that water can be shed. And so to, to give you a, kind of an illustrative uh, story uh, about this, and this is why I was glad that, that Kyle's here, um, I call this the complaining tenant. So I, I went to inspect a, uh, a quad and uh, when it's an apartment complex and I didn't know where to park and this woman pulled right up to the back of me. There was no other, I mean there was all open spots there and she pulled right up to the back of my car and I was like, uh, you know, I got out of the car, I'm like, I'm sorry, did I park in your spot? And she's like, yeah, you did. And I'm like, okay, like, I'll move, I didn't know where to go. 
Um, so, you know, that created a good rapport right off the bat. Um, but I, I, it actually did, because we, we wound up talking, and she allowed me to come in, and I was actually there to, uh, I was waiting for the listing agent to get there. One of the things that you know about me is uh, when, I, when I go to a job, I was there real early, and I was waiting for the listing agent to get there. So, you know, I, I talked to this tenant, she went in, she offered, you know, to let me come in, and um, I said, well, you know, I see some things out here that I'm going to work on first, and, uh, and the listing agent pulled up, and uh, th I hope they're not here, but this listing agent was highly unprofessional, and got out of the car and walked over to, with me in front of this house, in front of this unit, and her wind the, the tenant's window was open, the screen, you know, was, was just there, and she started to complain, of, you know, I, I have to listen to this, and, and I said, um, like, I mean, we're standing like five feet from this window, and I said, uh, she's right on the other side. In fact, I was just talking to her like 30 seconds ago, so she's right on the other side of this window. She probably hear everything that you're saying. She's like, I don't care. She's behind on the rent anyway. Like, I just want to be done with her. I'm like, okay, like, there's something I didn't need to know. But um, so, so one of the things that she had told me about, uh, the, the tenant did, and one of the things that was so just plainly obvious is that in front of her unit, um, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is, this is a cracked walkway, and, and th this set of stairs is to the right of this walkway. So this, this walkway here goes right down to the, to the exterior wall of the house. And if you can't really tell by this picture, but if you looked at these brick steps, they were like this, facing down towards the wall, right? And the way that this, uh, uh, it was a quad was set up was that it was a U. There were two units in front, there were a unit on each side, all facing uh, you know, in, and there were valleys in the roof that basically dropped water right on top of the porch, uh, right where you know, people would walk into their home. And there were no gutters on the house. So the, the complaining tenant complained about the big crack, and there was a big crack in that, in that concrete walkway, which is you know, something that was just opening you up to liability just by itself. Um, and, and, the, and the stairs that had significantly dropped towards that, the front of the house. And what essentially was happening here without those gutters is that it was directing all of that water, kind of, and you can see how it would drain into the inside of the house, uh, into the inside wall here. Uh, and and this, this condition right here was just basically like a ramp for that water to go right down in that wall. So I knew right away when I saw that, I'm like, I'm going to find some really interesting stuff on the back side of that wall. And um, I just want to put it in, into perspective, right? So you may be looking at it with, uh, w you know, with the eyes of how much is that going to cost? I got to fix that, you know, concrete walkway and I got to fix the brick steps. So the brick steps, and this, it's, again, this is a little hard to see. What I like about HomeWise, yeah, it is HomeWise. Uh, what I like about them is they kind of list out you know, the brick step cost, the labor, the supplies, and equipment allowances and things like that when they build out like an estimate of, of what things would kind of generally cost you. So the brick steps just by themselves are roughly about $2,700, right? I, I didn't get into the concrete walkway, but you know, that's bound not to be, um, you know, inexpensive. But this is, this is the, the, real, uh, the real killer, right? So again, I'm sorry about the pictures wall that goes directly through the brick and it's pretty significant it's probably you know an inch an inch and a half going down that wall and generally when I see problems with you know settlement and a foundation I'll see that it, it'll usually happen at the mortar joints right because that's the weakest spot so you'll see like step cracking going down so this went right through the wall so like I don't even I'm not an engineer but I can imagine like the amount of force that it would take to just crack that you know, brick must have been immense. And what essentially was happening is that it's, that water is draining off. This is right on the other side of that, you know, where the complaining tenant was saying that, that uh, you know, that, that those issues were, that water was draining right on the back side of that, putting additional pressure into that soil all around that wall that was, you know, that, that's supporting that structure. And it just cracked the heck out of it. Um, and uh, so, you, you know, you may look at it, and again, cost of repair foundation. This is a home advisor uh, 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 estimate, and they give you know your your range from like two thousand like national average dollars to replace that foundation. Those are pretty big numbers, right? Um, 
But the problem with this is, and, and Kyle, I, 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 Kyle, uh, you know, was at this house with me, uh, taking a look at this, and I saw him. I think it was probably like six weeks later, someplace. And I said, "Hey, you remember that you know foundation issue that happened at the house? Uh, do, you, do you remember? Because I'm in my head, and this is why I don't do cost estimates." I'm thinking like fifteen, twenty thousand dollar job. Kyle, how much was that? Was that job? About a hundred thousand dollars to fix that foundation. So uh, yeah, so I, the, the client passed on that one. Um, <laughs> there was some other stuff happening with with that place too, and I'll use I'll, again. I'll use uh, as an example. Um, I, I kind of think this is probably an overlooked item. You know. Uh, I know, you know, as a real estate investor, um, you buy a home with a deck, you're not really thinking about the deck too much, you're thinking about the main kind of components of that house, you know, in terms of what those things might cost you, but I wanted to throw decks in there, because I, you know, all the places that I go, I, I rarely see a deck that is, there's always something wrong with it, there's, there's always something that it hasn't been built to a, a, a safe standard. And you don't need to know, like, all of this stuff but you know basically like kind of the major things I'll see is like your your main beams are not sitting on posts the posts aren't notched the way that the the posts connect to those beams is with nails and not carriage bolts and that just means that you know if you're using a nail it's got a lot less shear strength than a carriage bolt so you get you know a bunch of your you know football loving friends over one day and you're all standing out on the deck and you might have a problem because it's basically nails that are that are holding you up there. Um, kind of the, the other issue that I see that's you know a major issue with decks is the ledger, and um, that's that's the board that connects the deck to the house. Again, there should be carriage bolts that are connecting that deck, and there should be flashing uh, where it meets the wall so that water isn't driving down into that wall, just like the foundation situation that we saw we saw before. Um, Example of what that looks like. This is this is the look. This is the same property on the back side. These decks were above my head, and I just got a thing with decks. I uh, when I was 19, I worked for a contractor, and we used to do work for banks, and we'd have like different jobs. So we'd like do a roof here, we do a deck there, you know, do different whatever a particular home, their bank-owned properties, whatever they needed. And um, thankfully, we we went to this one property. We we figured we'd about six hours to take down this deck. Again, it's one of these that's like over his hammer out. He goes up to the post and he just goes like that. One whack, the whole deck fell down. Um, so I'm a little, you know, I get a little uh, nervous when, when I see decks. And, and if you see me on an inspection, I'll kind of do that. You know, I'm about 250 and I don't want to, you know, put, put anything to, you know, overstress it and, you know, fall down. So, um, so I got a little thing with decks. But this is, this is the implication of that ledger flashing. So that it's missing ledger flashing, and it essentially rotted out the sheathing, the foundation wall on the other side of the home, and it was all due to water. Um, you know, water built the Grand Canyon. Lack of flashing and water getting down in that side of the wall, that's, that's what occurred. Um, so you kind of see uh, why I, I point uh, decks out. Um, and kind of here's here's an example of this. I found this uh, part of a new a news story. This was like a sorority fraternity party, and everyone you know got on the deck to take a picture, and they're all you know up against the railing, and you can see like the, the picture of of right at the point where they're about to have a really bad party day, and that's what happened to the thing. And generally, when decks fail, they usually fail towards the house because of that ledger, the ledger issues, they're not connect, sometimes they're nailed in instead of having those carriage bolts holding it onto the house. In this case, you had a weak ledger, but you had all the weight in the front, so the thing just teeter-tottered and everybody, you know, came down and there were some serious injuries. Nobody was, you know, killed, thankfully, but, um, but one of the things that I wanted to point out about that is, you know, so one, you have that liability exposure if you have, you know, you know, if you're looking at replacing an HVAC system, you're looking probably around seven thousand or so. You know, if you're looking at doing your your plumbing, you're looking at maybe three thousand, maybe on the high side five thousand. Your deck is going to cost you potentially up to uh, eighteen thousand dollars. The national average is seven thousand dollars, so it's a big 
unexpected cost item that you might not be, you know, looking at. Um, somebody have a question? Because I, I see so many you know things that have like the you know the sticker on there like inspected and then there's a whole bunch of you know issues with it so and it's not to like you know it's not to uh, to criticize building inspectors building inspectors are looking at things from the point um, of, of the initial build and they are required to utilize the code that the locality municipality or state you know, it's 2019. I think North Carolina is using. Maybe these guys can help me. I'm not. You know, we don't inspect the code, so I'm not a code inspector. But they've adopted. I believe it's the 2012 version of that code. So when they sign off on it, they're already seven years behind in terms of the code. So as long as you build that to the specs that were required in 2012, you're okay. But as building science gets better, we've realized there's some issues with with that, you know? So, like, if you're gonna build a deck, I'd refer you, it's called DCA6, and you wanna look at the deck, and it, and it has some of the things that I mentioned in there in terms of, you know, notching your posts and connecting your posts to your, to your joists and connecting ledger boards and things like that. Because we just know, you know, um, I, I found this interesting, I, I didn't originally include this, but a statistic about decks was that it did not matter in terms of whether or not that deck failed if the homeowner built it or a general contractor built it, right? Does that, you get that? It essentially means that no one knows how to build decks, whether you're a homeowner or a contractor. The deck is failing because, you know, daddy built decks, I built decks, you know, my son's gonna build decks, and I teach them how to build that deck based upon the way that I learn, which isn't necessarily the best way to build a deck, you know, so um, it's kind of why I shrug when somebody says I have 30 years of experience, you know, doing something. I'm like, well, you could have been done, doing it for 30 years the wrong way. It doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, generally it's a good thing, but it doesn't always mean that, you know, you, you know what you're doing with it. So, um, so just some general investors tips. I kind of went through things quick because I have a tendency to, to, to just kind of, based on my perspective and some of the things that I've learned over time, you know, you, as a real estate investor, you're not a retail client. So you're not walking in there and, and uh, you know, connecting with the, the paint of, you know, color in the house. You know, you, you don't care about the fire pit in the backyard. Those things are great, like for resale. You know, that's what retail customers look at. But you want to know your numbers. And that's where home inspectors and contractors can help you when you do your due diligence, not only in, in terms of the cost, but in what I find to be far more important is something you're going to walk away from that deal that is money well spent because I just saved you you know think about the amount of money that you make in an hour and if if I've saved you a day's worth of time or a week's worth of time uh, you know going down a road of a, of a not a unprofitable home I mean it's 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 worth it uh, right there um, you want to get when you enter in the contract. You want to get that inspection. Those those contractors out to estimate, to, you know, to give you an estimate uh, right away because you you, you want to get that that you know that stuff out of the way to some people here, uh, real estate agent, because they're going to save you thousands of dollars in the long run because they know you know and, and by savvy I mean an investor friendly agent because there is a huge difference like when when I was a real estate investor there were in, there were real estate agents that were barriers to getting the deal done and to have somebody that knows what you're looking at and that you're making decisions based upon the numbers you know uh, of that what's going on with that property in terms of profitability um, they, they're invaluable um, a, a big term but it, it essentially is uh, is something that a investor falls into the trap of when you continue to go down the road uh, with an endeavor um, because you've already spent money or you've already spent time you've 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 made some investment with your resources and you're looking at it now like well I've already spent all this money I, I, I need to buy this home Th those ways of thinking are for retail Clients, you know, for retail customers looking to buy a home, not an investment, uh, an investor. Um, you want to think of it in terms of 
I just paid that home inspector, I just paid you know, the HVAC guy, I just paid, and they just saved me a whole bunch of time and money because they told me that this house wasn't gonna be as profitable as, as what it could have been, and I'm gonna waste my time, and there's lots of other you know, potential profitable homes that are out there. So, um, so you wanna, you wanna flip that on its ear. The, re the reality of the situation is that when you spend that money, you're getting a better understanding of working your time in a much more valuable way. So, um, so that's what I got. Any, uh, any questions? Come on, Dan. Well, I was waiting to see if anybody else had any questions, <laughs> but yeah, no.